My name is Thomas Hörnfeldt and I'm Vice President of Sustainability and Public Affairs with SSAB. Today we're going to talk a little about how we at SSAB work with sustainability for ourselves and above all how we work with our customers to reduce their environmental impact and make them more sustainable. At SSAB we are a global steel company. We have around 16,000 employees and we're active in more than 50 countries worldwide. That makes us a relatively small steel maker with the world's 59th, 60th biggest steel company or so. But like all companies making steel out of iron ore, we do have a significant environmental impact. Iron ore is pretty much iron oxide and when you turn that into iron, you need to remove the oxygen from the iron ore. And since we invented the blast furnaces in the 14th century, we've been doing this with carbon in the form of coke. And then the oxygen moves from the iron ore into uh, the carbon and forms CO2. That, that's a chemical fact. If you make a ton of iron, you will generate approximately 1.5 tons of CO2. Uh, you can't really do much about that. You can, of course, screw that up more or less. But at SSAB, we're very close to this lower chemical limit to what is physically possible to do. In general, in Europe, we're quite good at making steel in a CO2 efficient manner, but at SSAB, we're actually 7% below the European average. And only these 7% means that we emit 600,000 tons less CO2 every year. We're 11% better than the American average. We're 16% better than the Russians. We're 26% better than an average Chinese steel plant, and we shouldn't even talk about India. But we can talk about China, because that's where half of the world's steel is produced today. And if we were to move our Swedish and Finnish steel making and put that into an average Chinese steel plant, that would increase the CO2 emissions in the world by 2.2 tons. That's the equivalent of 1.1 million cars driving 15,000 kilometers per year. That's a third of the cars in Sweden. But like I said, we're quite proud of being CO2 efficient and we have some of the world's most efficient blast furnaces, but still we do emit CO2 and we wanted to do something about this. We were thinking and thinking and thinking and we realized there is something that we could do. We have talked about the fact that we're using blast furnaces today, we're using carbon to remove oxygen and we create CO2. There is an alternative method to do this that's called direct reduction when you're using natural gas instead. But we were thinking if we were to take this one step further and use not natural gas but hydrogen, then we would expose the iron ore to hydrogen, the oxygen would move from the iron ore to hydrogen and we would emit not CO2 but water instead. And we could also use renewable energy sources to generate hydrogen from water basically. That way we would use electricity, we would create hydrogen, we would use hydrogen in our steel making process and we would get water back as a byproduct. And this would also take advantage of the fact that we have a virtually CO2 a free electricity system in Sweden. Um, and we're also these days having more and more renewable and variable energy sources. That means that at certain times we actually have a surplus of electricity in Sweden. And at those times we could still use electricity to make hydrogen, hydrogen that we could then store and then use in our own processes as it is needed. And that way, we could actually use SSAB, being a relatively large electricity consumer, to balance the Swedish power network. So you would not only have CO2-free iron making, but we would also promote the use of renewable electricity. However, when we're looking into steel making, that's only part of the environmental impact that we're talking about. Because when we're looking at what our customers are doing and where the steel is actually ending up, then if we take a heavy vehicle, a heavy truck as an example, then 
the production of steel, plastic, aluminum, glass, leather, and whatever goes into heavy vehicle today, and the assembly of the vehicle, that's only 10% of the environmental impact. 90% of the environmental impact of this vehicle comes from the use phase, when this truck is driving around using diesel as a fuel and creating CO2 emissions. Let's take a look. This is a typical Swedish timber truck. The maximum vehicle weight in Sweden is 60 tons. This truck weighs approximately 20 tons empty, so we have 40 tons of cargo. If we could reduce the weight of this truck by using high strength steels, by helping our customers to make a smarter design, we could make this truck lighter. Uh, let's say that we can reduce the weight of the truck by 10%. That means that it weighs not 20, but 18 tons, and we would be able to take not 40, but 42 tons of cargo. That is 5% more, with exactly the same fuel consumption, because the truck engine won't make the difference. It still carries 60 tons of load. And that means that if we can reduce the weight of this truck by 10%, we can save 5% of fuel, because we can, with exactly the same fuel consumption, transport 5% more. Or if you so will, every 20th trip can be cancelled. So when we were thinking about the, this at SSAB, we were thinking, what does this actually mean? Is it actually so that we can help our customers use high-strength steels, make lighter machines and save fuel through smart design and through smart use of steels. And could those benefits be so large that we could actually compensate our own emissions? We call it upgrading when we work with our customers to make more efficient products, more efficient machines, reducing fuel consumption and so on. And we created a concept that we call eco-upgrading where we look at these benefits from using less steel and making machines more efficient. Let's think about the timber truck as an example again. If you can make the truck lighter, it means that it can carry more load with the same fuel consumption. That's what we call increased capacity. That's the blue line in this chart. When, however, the truck is empty, then it doesn't, it's still empty, but it weighs less, it weighs 18 tons instead of 20, and that's also resulting in, in reduced fuel consumptions. That's what we call reduced weight and the green contribution in this chart. And of course, when we use less steel in this truck, that means that we produce less steel and we have less emissions in our own steel production. That's the orange contribution on top of this chart. And we haven't talked about this yet, but some trucks, they also carry abrasive material. Think about rock fill, gravel or whatever, which slowly over time wears down the bed, the tipper body of the truck. And many trucks need to use two, three or four tipper bodies over the lifetime of the truck. But if we can use our very hard and abrasive resistant steels for this tipper body, for this bed of the truck, maybe we can reduce that steel consumption and the truck will be happy with two or less tipper bodies over the lifetime of the truck. That also means a lower steel consumption over the lifetime of the truck. And from that point of view also less emissions from steel making. Now, when we use less steel to make this truck, we have an immediate saving of CO2 when less steel goes into the truck. The other savings from lower weight and increased cargo capacity, these savings accumulate over the lifetime of the truck. And at some point in time, these savings are as large as the emission that we make ourselves during the production of the steel that goes into the truck. And this point in time, we call the CO2 payback time. From this point and onwards, we will create net savings of CO2. And for the remainder of its life, this truck will drive around making the world a little better. 
Let's take a look at a couple of real-life examples from our customers around the world. This is a Swedish timber trailer to stay with timber. It's made by a company called MST and together with MST we looked at the design and we also upgraded the steels used in this trailer to make it half a ton lighter and increasing then the cargo capacity with half a ton. And when we made the calculations it turns out that we reached this CO2 payback time after three months. The lifetime of this trailer is seven years. So for six years and nine months, this trailer runs around making the world a little better. And over its lifetime, it saves 25 tons of CO2 emissions. And also for its owner and for the planet, it saves 8,100 liters of diesel fuel, which is also a substantial monetary saving. So here we have transport efficiency, material efficiency and financial objectives working hand in hand to make the world a little more sustainable. If you look at large machines you have even bigger savings. This is a huge mining truck, it's made by Terex in Scotland. Uh, but the bed, the tipper body of the truck is made by a company called NHL in China. And in this case, together with NHL, we were able to reduce the weight of the body by 22% or 2.5 tons. In this case, that meant a CO2 payback time of only two months. The lifetime of the truck is 10 years. So for nine years and 10 months, this truck drives around reducing environmental impact. And during its life, it saves more than a thousand tons of CO2 emissions or 317,000 liters of diesel. Again, a huge saving in terms of CO2, in terms of fuel and in terms of money. To have maybe a more normal example, uh, let's take a look at this uh, truck trailer combination from Ernst Express, not too far away from here. The, here we worked with the design of the three containers that are on the truck and the trailer and we were able to reduce the weight of these containers through the use of high strength and wear resistant steels by 700 kilos per container, so 2.1 tons in total. In this case that meant a CO2 payback time of 1.3 years and a CO2 saving over the lifetime of these containers of 105 tons. And again, a fuel saving of almost 34,000 liters of diesel. Again, finance, fuel, CO2 emissions, we see savings all over the picture. We have no contradiction between these demands. This is a win-win situation and we're quite proud of the fact that we are able to work and we're allowed to work with our customers to fulfill the SSAB vision of a stronger, lighter and more sustainable world.